Wolf. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Righto, tell you idea champs. Now today we're gonna to find out what is the best video editing laptop, not only just for video editing, for the apps that accompany video editing. Like you're probably gonna need some sort of audio app, Photoshop, After Effects and stuff like that. They've got to perform with those sort of apps as well. So it is video editing, but content creation too. So I'm gonna give you my recommendation of the top five laptops for video editing and also tell you what you need to look for in a laptop for video editing. What are the most important things to look for in a laptop? I will also be doing in the future a video about the best laptop for other content creation like writing, coding, photography, 3D and music production. So sub up, join the wood train, hit that bell ding a ling a dong if you wanna see those videos. Now first things first, what do you gotta look for in a video editing laptop? Now the truth is, see this banger here? It was on Oz Bargain for like under a thousand dollars and that will do it for you. All right, there'll be some compromises to that laptop, but I know people that have run successful YouTube channels and I've talked to them with the MacBook Pro 13 with eight gigabytes of RAM, yes. It can be done like that. And I actually asked this person, I said, how long does it take you to render your videos? And I was thinking, you know, they do vlog style stuff, 1080p. I'm thinking it's gotta be like 30, 40 minutes for a 12 minute video. And no, she said like three minutes. And I'm like, what? And that's because they use Final Cut. And this is true of Adobe Rush as well. There are other applications that do this, is they pre-render in the background. So while you're editing your video, they're pre-rendering in the background. And then when you hit render, it's boom, it's like three minutes. And this is a 13 inch MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM. So don't let anyone tell you you need this like mega expensive laptop, even though MacBook Pros are expensive. Same thing applies for a 13 inch PC, even if it doesn't have a graphics card. You can get it done if you're using something like Adobe Rush. That renders in the background. Or even like PowerDirector. That thing renders like a beast. But that is the downfall with those 13 inch laptops that don't have a graphics card. You're gonna to have to use a video editor that pre-renders, there's gonna be some compromise, the screen ain't that big. And if you use something like Premiere Pro, the render times are gonna be horrendous. So when I talk about the best laptops for video editing, you can get it done with the other stuff. But my recommendations, take the hardware out of the way. So what you need in a good laptop that gets out of the way of your video editing content creation, you want at least a 15 inch laptop. You can maybe go a 14 inch or even a 13 inch with a, you know, like a MacBook Pro that has the taller displays or Surface products. But I think 15 inch is the sweet spot just because it can be hard to edit video on a 13 inch when you've got lots of tracks. You also want a display that has a wide color gamut. Now it doesn't have to be the most expensive display. Ideally, you want at least 100% sRGB if you're going to the web, YouTube and stuff like that. But more important than that, you want it to be color accurate. You can have a full HD display that's 70% sRGB, but is color accurate, like what you see is what you get. And that will be better than say a display that has a wide color gamut, but is not color accurate. So the most important thing is accuracy. Ideally, you want both. You want color accuracy and a wide color gamut. And you also want a discrete graphics card. The rule of thumb with a discrete graphics card is you want how much K your footage is. That's how much video RAM you want. So you're doing 4K editing, you want four gigabytes of video RAM. 6K, you want six gigabytes and so on. You know, obviously if you're doing 8K, you want at least eight gigabytes of video memory. Now, as I said, I've seen people run YouTube off an eight gigabyte RAM MacBook Pro with no graphics card, but ideally you want at least 16 gigs RAM. I'd say that's the perfect sweet spot the more, the better. And then you want a good processor. You want the 45 watt part. So that's the H series, whether it's a six core or an eight core. I mean, it's interesting now, you're gonna have laptops that come out with say Ice Lake CPUs and graphics cards. So they will be 15 watt CPUs. Those things will be good for video editing too because of the hardware encoding built into Ice Lake CPUs, the HEVC and H.264 encoding. That will sort of make up for, you know, raw graphics power or raw CPU power. Now ports may be a consideration. Maybe you want an SD card slot. Maybe you want USB type A. If that's the sort of thing you want and know that carrying dongles is gonna annoy you, 
make sure you get a laptop with ports. For me, it's not so much of a concern. I don't mind using dongles these days. I'm used to it. It's 2020. An all USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 laptop is fine for me, but some people don't like it. You know yourself. And I also think you want a good trackpad unless you're using a mouse. You also might want to consider going really mobile, getting a 13-inch laptop with Thunderbolt 3 and using an eGPU. But remember, if the eGPU is not around, you do lose your power. But it's definitely an option. So why I'm saying all this is now you know what you need for a great video editing laptop. So that means now you can take that into consideration. You can make an informed choice about your laptop for video editing. And guess what? Pretty much all the 15 inch laptops are gonna be amazing, especially if you're talking about the 15 inch premium laptops, the gaming laptops, they're all gonna be good for video editing. So I'm gonna give you my top five, but if you don't like my top five or it's out of your budget, you can always just use this criteria and then choose one for yourself. Now, I assume if you guys are watching this, you're really interested in content creation. And I'll tell you what, guys, I've got a deal for you. You can get two months of premium access for free to Skillshare where you can learn all these sort of things. I mean, it's amazing what you can learn. Animation, creative writing, filmmaking, fine art, graphics design, illustration, music production, photography, UX design, web development. Now, I have actually been learning to use a bit of Final Cut, been getting some tips on how to build my YouTube channel, iPhone filmmaking, Premiere Pro color grading, I really need that. And even something that is going to help me out tremendously, that's film lighting made simple. You can join the 7 million creators on Skillshare learning their craft and you get two months for free. Imagine what you can learn from two months for free. Even got famous YouTubers like Sarah Tapici, you know, if you want to learn how to vlog. And not only that, this stuff you're doing is a business and you can also learn business and marketing so what do you got to lose for the first 500 people that click in the link in my description you can get two months of online courses for free unlimited and there's no obligation to stay imagine what you can learn in two months you can join the other 7 million creators that use Skillshare and I'm just going through these like candy and yeah I'm trying to learn Final Cut because when I delete the audio it deletes the video and I'm like what the hell is happening I need to learn this stuff uh, thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring this video and yeah, check them out. So my top five laptops for video editing. At number five, I'm going to have the MacBook Pro 13 and the XPS 2-in-1 or the XPS 13. Now these do not have graphics cards, but they both have Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you can boost them up with an eGPU. But with the MacBook Pro, if you're using Final Cut, you're going to render in the background, you can still get it done, you've got the quality display, and with the XPS 13 2-in-1, you have Ice Lake CPU, so you get better hardware encoding HEVC and H.264. And also with the XPS 13 2-in-1 or the XPS 13, you get that taller display. So both the MacBook Pro and the XPS 13 line both have a tall display, so they're good for video editing even though they're 13 inch laptops and the quality of the display is good they're a good choice for mobile video editing so now in the top four they're all 15 inch laptops or one is a 16 inch and i do recommend you get the one with the 4k displays because some of these laptops you can get a full hd display or you can get a high refresh display you can get it done with those but they don't have the wide color gamut they're not as bright and they're not as high quality as say the oled display or the 4k led or for example the macbook pro retina display so with all of them i'm recommending the high quality display over say a high refresh one so for number four, I picked the ZenBook Pro Duo. What's great about this is if you're going to be using 3D content, After Effects and stuff like that, this will still be great for those products. This thing has two displays, one high quality OLED display, wide color gamut, power, like i9 power, RTX 2060 full. It is amazing the amount of power in this and not that you'll be overclocking and stuff, but wow, this was like the fastest rendering machine when I done that. When I overclocked and undervolted, it's just blazingly fast. It is a bit thicker, chunkier, a bit heavier, but the utility of having two displays is amazing. That's number four. 
Number three is legendary. It is the laptop I've done most of my videos on. So, you know, I've done like 600 something videos on YouTube. Most of them have been done with an XPS 15 from like 2016 to now. Never let me down. And despite it not having, say, the specs of, say, a gaming laptop, it's always competitive and right up there when it comes to content creation. Yeah, if you want a game, this is not the one for you compared to, say, like an Aero or something like that. But for content creation, you're never really hitting the CPU and GPU that hard. You can use the trackpad for video editing. Amazing battery life, build quality, amazing. You can get two displays, both of them high quality, you know, 100% Adobe RGB, 100% DCI-P3 with the OLED. It won't let you down. It is an amazing machine for content creation. Now, there is a new one coming out within a month or so. And maybe that might have a 6 gigabyte graphics card and a more beefier graphics card. So if you're going to go to 6K or 8K sort of content, you may want to wait till that comes out. Or get one of the other laptops with more powerful graphics cards like RTX 2070, RTX 2060, 2080. But it's never let me down and I highly recommend it. Number two would be the Aero 15. Now the Aero 15 is one of the best displays, even though everybody else is using the same sort of OLED, theirs is the most color accurate, Delta E, less than one. For color accuracy, when you just look at the display, it just looks amazing. It's got the power, like it seriously has some power. And that's the only reason I'm picking it over the XPS 15, because if you're going to do a bit of 3D and you're going to do a bit of After Effects, that extra oomph of having like an RTX 2070, for example, will help you out in that regard. If you're not going to be using After Effects and 3D, I'd probably go the XPS 15. I just prefer the battery life and the ergonomics of the XPS 15. But with all of these PC laptops, you get, you know, SD card, you get USB Type A, you get all the ports. And the Aero 15 is a high recommendation. Now, one that I haven't put in here, the Razer Blade, that is awesome for content creation too. Any of the gaming laptops that have, you know, RTX graphics or, you know, like a 1660, they're all great for video editing as well. So don't think you have to stick within these, but I'm just picking my best ones. And for the best laptop for video editing, I think at the moment is the MacBook Pro 16. The display is awesome. All right, it's not 4K, but it is color accurate, like bang on color accurate. One of the best displays you're going to see. It is 16 inch, so it's huge. So you get more tracks when you're video editing. You don't get the ports. That's one downside to it. But if we're just talking about the Adobe Suite, it is so optimized with metal for the Adobe Suite now. It's not as good as the PCs in After Effects. So if you're really heavy into After Effects as well, maybe one of the PCs will be better. But for, you know, Photoshop, even DaVinci Resolve, the performance is amazing. Let me tell you. I got 6K footage from a Panasonic SH1. So this is 6K footage, 200 megabits per second, H.265, which a lot of cameras when they're doing 6 to 8K will be doing H.265, HEVC. And I'll put it on this MacBook Pro and I can play it back no problems at full in Premiere Pro. Now that same footage put on a PC, desktop or any of the PC laptops, yeah, it will play it back at full, but they scream like they're really working hard to play back the H.265 footage at 6K. The MacBook Pro has, you know, the beloved T2 chip, but what the T2 chip does is decode and encode HEVC. So even though it doesn't have the specs of the PC, because of optimizations, I can edit 6K on that. And where the PCs are working really hard to, you know, use that 6K footage, the MacBook Pro is, you know, it's nearly silent editing that sort of content. So this is the current state of it at the moment. But you've got to remember that MacBook Pro is new and there's going to be new 10th generation laptops coming out very soon with RTX Super Graphics, okay? So things may change. New XPS 15, then we'll see where the Mac stands then once those new laptops come out. But I think currently it's just amazing performance on this Mac and yeah, highly recommend it. But I thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.